Today we will be doing some very simple ink blending to create a gorgeous card. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Creative Coloring with Iram. Today it's all about creating an easy card that looks beautiful and it also looks like you spend quite a deal of time working on it so that when you send it to someone they also feel great about it and also you don't have to work too hard on one card in this way you will be able to send out several cards to your friends. For my project I will be using the newly released Inky Lily stamp set. I will be using the two outline flowers that you see there and of course the leaves. I will heat emboss the images in pure white embossing powder. I'm going to first prep the 80 pounds Crest Solar White cardstock that I have here from Altenew with anti-static powder. Then I have put my stamping mat beneath the cardstock so that I have a bit of cushioning to get full coverage while stamping. And then I will stamp the images in embossing ink. After I'm done stamping all the images, I will pour over pure white embossing powder and heat set it. I will suggest that you stamp and heat emboss several flowers at this point so that when you need a card, you already have this part of your project ready. I have cut one of the flowers to show you the ink blending. This is super easy. I am sure everyone knows how to ink blend. And for this one, I will start by adding the ink to the center in a circular motion and blending it outwards towards the tip of the petals. I will keep the concentration dark in the center and the tips relatively lighter. For this, I am using the Rubylite dye ink. You can even pounce off your blending tool onto the palette before applying ink onto the cardstock, though I don't mind the smudges as they will be covered up due to the intense concentration of the ink in the center. To add more depth, the second color of ink that I will be using is Midnight Violet and I will apply this with the number 10 detailed blending brush. The reason I'm using the detailed blending brush is that I want to do controlled inking and I want the Midnight Violet to just be on the center portion of the flower. Now this is up to you how much dark of a center you like. I stopped when I liked the look of my flower. So you can go as light or as dark as you want and you can even skip this step. Though I do like the two-tone of the flower. This does give a lot of fourth dimension to the flower. For the leaves, I will start by applying lime dye ink as light color. And for the dark color, I chose to go with the mountain pine dye ink. You don't have to work very hard in blending it perfectly. Once the ink dries, the ombre looking leaves will look beautiful. I'll quickly fussy cut this one leaf and show you how it looks and just see the ombre inking on there. It looks absolutely smooth and here is my flower. The ink has now settled and dried. Now this is not a necessary step but I thought this would step up my flowers. They will look prettier and different. So I have this white gel pen. I will go ahead and color in the stamens first and it's not the only thing that I will do. I will also add quite a few specks and dots on the petals to add variation and interest and make my flower stand out. And this does look very pretty, don't you agree? This is a wood grain white paper up close from Altenew. I will use the largest die from the Half Tone Nesting Circles die set and die cut a circle out of this. I will also die cut another circle out of spare white cardstock to layer my wood grain one to make it sturdy. I will apply Volcano Lake dye ink with the blending tool onto this circle. The wood grain pattern gives a really cool texture after blending. I have shared this previously with the wood grain powder cardstock as well. Again, you can skip this step if you want to. You can even change the shape of this element. I'm only adding this to step up my card layout and also to add another color to the mix that will make the card look pleasing to the eye. And this also suggests that a lot is going on on the card when you add another layer to the design even though it's just a die cut circle. You can even use a colored cardstock instead of ink blending one but I do like the wood grain pattern mixed with ink blending so this is why I'm adding this paper. 
Once done, I will layer the inked die cut over the extra die cut to make it sturdy with liquid adhesive. Next, I will add black paint splatters. You can skip this part if you like clean looking cards. The card does look pretty without the splatters. I just can't help it and have to add splatters. Then adhere the wood grain die cut with foam tape. And then apply foam tape onto the images and tear them over the circle die cut. Add some more paint splatters if you want to. I will then stamp my sentiment. And you can do this before you adhere the images. And that's it. I will just add a few crystals and my card is ready. How quick and easy was this card to make and it does look very nice after putting it together, doesn't it? And that sentiment is absolutely perfect. Altenew does have some great uplifting sentiment stamps. Thank you for watching everybody. Bye. Hello there. Did that video just spark your creativity? And do you want more project ideas and inspiration videos too? Well, if you do, please make sure that you subscribe to the Altenew YouTube channel. Also, make sure that you do click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.